We're now going to look at the new parametric and dimensional constraints available in AutoCAD 2010. These are on the parametric tab up here on the ribbon so click on parametric and as you can see we have a geometric panel, a dimensional panel and a manage panel to manage the constraints that we place on the drawing. So let's have a look at these two lines here. We've got this line here and this line here. I want this line here to be parallel to this line here. So that's a geometric constraint. So what I'm going to do is go to the parallel option here, click on parallel, and I'm going to select the first object. Now this is the line that I want objects to be parallel to. So I click there, it then prompts me to select the second object. Notice the little parallel icon following the pick box there. I select the top part of this line here. If I select the bottom part of the line here, it will go parallel from this endpoint here. I want to go parallel from this endpoint here. So I click here, and as you can see now, you get this little parallel constraint icon like so, and the two lines are always parallel to each other. When you hover over an object with a constraint on it, you'll notice that little blue icon, the little white box and the little blue box there, that is letting you know that there is a constraint on there. Now what we can do is we can hide those. If I go up here and show them all and click on show, at the moment they're showing. So it says select objects to show constraints. So if I click there and there and then enter, it's showing the constraints. If I go hide all, they disappear. It's a bit like layers where you freeze and thaw your layers. So if I do show all, it brings them back. Let's have a look at a different type of constraint there. Let's have a look at a coincident constraint. Now let's say that I want these two lines here to intersect where this endpoint and this endpoint are coincident to each other. They will always then be coincident to each other because that's what the constraint does. It constrains them to the coincident point. That's this icon here, coincident. So if I click here and select first point, I want this end here, left click, and then second point, this end here, left click, they're now always coincident. Notice this line here moved over to be coincident at this point here. Now if I click on this line and I move it, so I right click and I go to move on the shortcut menu, and I'm just going to move it using this end point here. If I drag it down there, look, can you see what's happening? The other line remains coincident at that end point. It just drags, can you see, and moves around. So if I come down here and click, they are still coincident at that point, as you can see. Now, another constraint that we can use is we might want this circle here to be concentric with this arc here. Let's use this icon here, concentric. And I'm going to select my first object, which is the arc, and then the second object, which is the circle. And it makes the circle concentric to the arc, similar to the parallel over here. First object is the datum object, second object is the object that is going to follow the constraint. Now those are geometric constraints. Let's have a look at a dimensional constraint. I'm going to show you a very basic one. It's a linear dimensional constraint. This line here, if I click on it and hover over one of the grips like so, you can see there is any particular length. It's a standard line. So as you can see it's got standard grips, end point and midpoint. So what I can do here is if I make one of these grips live and click on it, I can stretch it, I can move it around, just like I would any other line. I don't want to do that though. What I want to do is I want to fix this line to a particular length. So I don't want it to select it by way of grips. So I go to linear here, and I want a linear constraint. So linear is either in the X or Y direction in AutoCAD. The first constraint point is going to be up at this end here left click. Second constraint point, this end here, left click. Then I can specify where the dimension line is going to go. I'm going to place it there and it's telling me how long that line is. 130.789 millimeters at the moment. If I click there, it places the dimension line and I can edit the text. Now that is not just multi-line text, that is the actual length of that line. And the D1 is saying that that dimension there has to be a fixed length. So if I change that value in the box to 100, like so, and press enter, that line is now constrained and locked to always be 100 millimeters long. So if I now click on that line 
and now click on the grip and stretch like that look can you see what happens that distance is always 100 long the line will be longer because it's an angled line but that dimensional constraint in that direction makes sure that it's always 100 that's very useful if you're creating objects with fixed sizes and what I can click here show dynamic constraints I take that off it disappears click on it again it comes back again show and hide show and hide very much like layers now to delete a constraint I click on this button here and it says select objects if I click on that line there and enter to confirm it deletes the constraint it just goes back to being a normal object again I can do that with these objects here as well and remove the geometric constraints if I wish so you can see there in AutoCAD 2010 that these geometric and dimensional constraints are very useful for regular repetitive tasks in AutoCAD 2010